My name's Alan Hart and today I wanted to pipe a central heating system up. I'm going to pipe this as a one pipe system. Nowadays we wouldn't install one pipe systems but this is to show you what a one pipe system would look like. Also if ever you need to go to a system and you need to adapt it and it's a one pipe system so that you understand what a one pipe system is and you're able to adapt to that. Um, so yeah, um, I'd like to thank Trade Help um, for supporting this video. They have paid for um, the pay for the radiators, the pay for the pipe and all the fittings so that I could do this video for you. So so yeah, let's go and have a look now. I'm going to do this as if it is a one pipe heating system with six radiators. And what we've got, I've got my radiator uh, brackets on the wall here. And what I'm doing is this is this is upstairs across here all across there and then obviously the the, the um, brackets below there for downstairs I'm gonna put some radiators on here now when we used to install one pipe systems they used to have just an elbow on if you see a heating system and it's got an elbow on just like that and it hasn't got a valve there's a good chance it's a one pipe system as the years went on sometimes people change these and they put TRVs on that makes it a little bit harder to see if it's a one pipe system or not but I'll show you some other ways that you can tell I'm now going to pipe this up as a one pipe system for downstairs. Um, with a one pipe system, I've got well, I'm going to use press fitting for this. I normally use press fit on all my jobs now. Um, but what you find is you'll have a T under there and you'll have a T under there, and the pipe will join together, which I'll show you shortly. But on some one pipe systems, they actually went in series, so the the, the pipe it went into the radiator. And then back out the other side and then to the next radiator and to the next radiator now the issue with that is if you turned one of the radiators off it would turn all the system off so then they had the pipes underneath so that the system would still work um, if you turned one of the radiators off so I'll pipe this up now for anybody who is interested in press fitting this is what I use now um just got my T there so as much as possible I'll just press these off just like that this T that I've got on this this is actually a gas T if you have a look inside it's got a yellow o ring but um I'm not going to use this system, I'm just doing it for this video, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm going to fit some of this now. When we do press fitting, we always make sure that the fitting is fully in. thing with using press fitting is that we're not we're not getting any muck in pipe there's no solder and this is uh, no solder no flux and this has been used in commercial now for I think it's around 50 years most hospitals and places like that use press fit some of the people that comment on these videos they mistake these fittings for push fit but these are these are press fit so they're crimped together 
see there you can see it's got the mark on it which is an M symbol and that's where it's been crimped together. I've piped what I would say is downstairs so far. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to adapt the system. If you come to a system where it's a one pipe system and you need to add a new radiator, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Also, different types of systems that it might be on. So I'll try and talk through that as well. So it may be that it's on an old style gravity boiler. It may be that it's on a combi boiler, etc. So we'll have a we'll have a little look at that as well. Um, so as you can see here, if we imagine this is the floor around the system, so it's just one circuit around the system. So we've got a T there that goes into this radiator. It also goes across the bottom of the radiator. So if you imagine normally this would be under the floorboards. There's different types of one pipe. Sometimes it'll come in the valve, one of the valves will come in the top. Most of the ones I've seen in domestic normally just come in bottom part um, and they just come like this. So again, we've got a pipe underneath there and a pipe underneath and they're just teed together. Coming a bit more closer and I'll just show you that bit. So we can see that it just goes into radiator, comes back out of radiator, but also just comes along bottom. And again, with the rest of it. So that's why they say it's one pipe, because it's just one pipe around the system. Now, these, these quite a few issues with this type of system. Um, one is, you, you, well, you wouldn't be able to flush this system. So if, if it's got muck in it, you wouldn't be able to flush it. But we'll go through some of them things shortly. But that's how that looks so far. Piped all the, all the pipe work up onto it now. If we start from this side, we can see we've got us a pipe. So that could be, could be the floor or the return really. But we'll say it's the floor. So the floor comes round, comes round here, part of it goes into the radiator here, goes along, and some of that heat comes back out, some of the heat goes into this one, and again they go along and round, all the way around the system, and then it goes upstairs, round and down. But then if we went back to where the boiler is, so you'll see your pipe comes back, at the boiler, you would just see just two pipes. Now these pipes could be 15 millimeter. They could be 22 mil. Some circuits, all the circuit is in 22 mil, and then you'll just have a tail that sticks up in 15. Sometimes it come up in 22 as well and go into like a 22 millimeter valve. Oops. So that's how you would. Um, that's how you would pipe it. So now we'll have a look at if we were going to extend this and we were going to add a new radiator or we were going to move a radiator in a room. We'll have a look at that now and we'll see how you could do that. If we look at how one of these radiators is piped, the main floor pipe is this pipe and it goes round as a circuit. If we want to move this radiator, say that's under window and we want to move it to this wall here what we wouldn't do we wouldn't just extend these pipes so so say it's there and we've got these two pipes sticking up out of the floor and with a two pipe system we could just extend pipes round skirting if we needed to and we could connect radiator on i'm just trying to give you an example there really with this what we need to do we need to cut it out of the circuit. We'd move it and we'd keep the circuit so it continues like this. So it's always continue. What I'll do, I'll do a little drawing and I'll show you what I mean. If we look at this diagram here, this is more or less what we've got now with the heating system. So we've got the floor or the return, whichever you want to call it coming up. Could It could work either way, it doesn't really matter. But so you've got your floor coming up 
and it goes round all the system and then back to the boiler and then it's got your rads that just tee off as a one pipe so now we want to move this radiator so what I'll do is I'll scribble this out and then we'll move it over here so we'll get rid of this radiator here we'll put a new radiator here what we then need to do we need to extend this system round like that and then back into the system and then so what I've done there the system is continuous it's always going to go around in that in that circle like like we had if that makes sense if we wanted to extend this system it's more or less the same really so say we want another radiator here this could be a new conservatory What we need to do then is we need to break into the system so say that it's there um, sorry about this drawing and again cut that bit out What we're always doing, we're always making it that it's a continuation of the system. That drawing's not very good, but hopefully you get the gist of that. Sorry about my really uh, poor drawings, but I hope I hope you understood them. Um, but just to show you on here, if we had a new radiator going here or wherever. We would break into the system, we'd cut this piece out, cut it out, cut a section out, and then we'd connect in and then always continue the circuit so that um, so the system will work. Um, flushing, so power flushing, I've had a lot of people ask me in the past, can you power flush a one pipe system? The answer to that is no, not really. It's not going to power flush the radiators. If you imagine You've got your pump on and it's flushing through here. The water is always going to continually just go around the circuit and it's not going to go through the radiator. So if you wanted to flush the system on a one pipe system, you could put the power flush, uh, the power flush machine on and that would flush the pipe um, circuit, which is still a good idea. But then you would need to take the radiators and you'd need to flush the radiators one at a time to to clean them out um, so i hope that helps with that um, when it goes to systems you can you can have a one pipe system on you could have it on different types of uh, boilers so it might be that you've got a combi boiler and all you would see you just see your flow returns there and most of the time the systems will work they what they're not as good as a two pipe system but they will still work to a to a fashion in a fashion um, so yeah uh, and then you might have an old gravity floor standing boiler um, one side of it um, you'll have a pump on it and it'll pump around a one pipe system um, yeah if you've got any questions please please ask them in the comments below I've tried my best to um, cover what I can what I can uh, what I feel is good um what'll help. Um yeah, um thanks thanks very much for watching and yeah, thank you.